Welcome back, everybody. We're here in Boston, Massachusetts at BMC Day. I hope we're getting some good B-roll here, Andy. <laughs> some good action out here in Boston Harbor. We're here with Brian Gracely and, and Stu Miniman. We've got the part of the SiliconANGLE Wikibon team out here. We've got our you know, annual dinner tonight, Legal Seafood, looking yeah. forward to that. Check out the Harborside, first floor, we'll be there if D you're around. Dave, we're, we're in the shadows of where the Cube first event was too, right back here in Boston, Chowderfest, as That's we right. uh, called it at uh, EMC World back 2010. <laughs> yeah, so let's do a, uh, a little wrap up on uh, what's happened, you know, it's the time of season where we talk about what happened last year, well this year actually, and what's going to happen next year. So, where do we start? I mean, what's the, what's the big news of 2015 from your takes, Stu? Yeah, so, I, I mean, Dave, when, when you brought me into the company almost six years ago, it was the discussion of convergence. Uh, you know, we talked everywhere about kind of, you know, breaking away those silos, uh, and the question we have is every new technology that comes out, is it just a tool? Does it just create another new silo? Uh, convergence, hyperconvergence has grown uh, quite a bit. Uh, we did a couple of years ago uh, what we call server SAN, and boy is that grown in leaps and bounds. Uh, one of the big news events of the year, of course, is Dell's acquisition of EMC, uh, and I really see Dell's positioning to be ready for this next generation of how infrastructure is going to change, not only in data centers, uh, but in the, public, in, in the public clouds, as getting ready for that. So what they get from EMC, how they're positioned uh, from kind of the market power that they'll have, and uh, all of those pieces. So, you know, big, big area in my space, uh, convergence and, and everything that's grown off of it has only gotten bigger. And, you know, boy, my phone's ringing off the hook on all this stuff. So Brian, from your standpoint, first of all, you know, 2015, welcome to Wikibon. Thank it's you. a pleasure yeah. to have you. Um, you know, long time industry watcher, uh, participant, practitioner. What's, uh, what's your take on 2015? Uh, so for me, the big thing was, 2015 was the year that uh, public cloud essentially reset the rules for IT. Um, so uh, Amazon now announced their numbers, and, and while it's still, you know, $8 billion is a lot of money, it's not, you know, it's not everything, but it's forcing everybody else's hand. The, the on-demand nature of, of IT resources, the transparency of pricing, um, the speed at which new features are coming along. I mean, we're seeing it impact a lot of different things. We saw HP get out of the public cloud market. We saw the huge Dell and EMC merge, you know, EMC merge, well, acquisition, which we think, you know, cloud had an impact in that. So, to me, uh, the rules are kind of being rewritten and everybody is figuring out how do I play in this new game or, or how will this, these new rules affect me. Yeah, and, and I think I'd add to that. I mean, we've, we're seeing, uh, and we've seen this now for a <coughs> decade, a slow motion collapse in infrastructure, hardware, and software pricing. And it's really driven by two main factors, there may be others, but it's really cloud and open source software. And business models are changing, people are having to respond to that, not only from the, the vendor side, but also from the buyer side uh, as well. And, and so, the, to me, the Dell EMC acquisition it was inevitable. The HP split was inevitable. Companies like BMC going private, you know, have to happen in order for them to continue to be able to, to fund R&D. The big question is, okay, going forward, you know, what's the market look like? Stu, you talked about server SAN. You know, really completely changing that model. You know, the pendulum swinging back, we've talked about that a lot. Um, the way in which companies leverage this digital fabric that we talk about all the time. We heard today all, all talk about digital transformation. Really what that's about is taking advantage of all these technologies that are out there. It's not necessarily inventing them, it's applying them and creating new business models. Yeah, absolutely. Dave, you and I went to London with the MIT Sloan School and talked about the second machine age. So it's really about you know, automation, it's about changing processes, and uh, the, you know, the discussion here at BMC Day has been that digital transformation, uh, which is you know, how much is the technology itself going to run itself, how much of it are we going to you know, align our organization, our processes, and our people to be able to take advantage of that, and that of course is all going to drive the business. It's pulling together, uh, I thought, thought a great line today is it's not no longer information technology, it's business technology we have to talk about it. So the merging of those two, because as an infrastructure person, I always know the role of infrastructure was to deliver the apps, and the role of apps is to help drive the business. So it's helped getting back to that kind of core of, of what we're working at. It ties into kind of the discussion we've had of containers all year uh, and, and, and all the platforms that are going on. Yeah. Well, infrastructure as code is a, you know, the hot you know, buzz phrase. Right. But people you know, got to kind of be careful what they wish for, right? I mean, it's great to talk about, um, but it's really sort of certainly transformable, transforming from a developer standpoint. But it's really changing the economics of the IT business. Brian, I wonder if you could talk about that from both perspectives, from the IT organization, <coughs> or the right. I should use 
Evelyn's term, the business technology organization, right. what does it mean, and how do you see it affecting the industry? Well, I mean, we heard some numbers this morning, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of quote them, you know, this was talking about IT losing control, and, and we're at a BMC show, which is, uh, you know, IT ops and trying to enable those, I mean, 40% of spend is going outside of IT, right? It's not that it's going away, it's going outside of IT. 80% of the people are, are trying to go around IT to make decisions. 60% uh, 60 are trying to bypass it. 30% um, you know, of applications are moving to the cloud. IT needs to either kind of get on board or, or they're, in, they're in potentially some big trouble. And the thing is, there's never been more technology, and in some cases, free open source technology to help them do that. Um, they've got to get better at it because the, the baseline's being set by the guys in the public cloud, Amazon, Azure, Google, uh, you know, how fast you can roll stuff out. And at the end of the day, if I run a business, I don't care how many ports you had to plug in or what you had to configure, I, I want the business to go faster, I want to grow it. Um, th there's, a lot of, there's a lot of change that's going to happen and people are going to have to figure out how to get better at these things. I think of that, you know, the old Microsoft commercials, what do you want to do today? I, I, I mean, are we going to enter a, an era, Stu, of virtually everything is a service? I mean, is that what the future holds for us. Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, people want to consume it that way, uh, and you know, it's how fast we can respond to the business, uh, and you know, boy, you know, cycle times. Brian and I have been, been looking at this quite a bit. You t think of the old you know, typical software release. You know, it's 12 months. Uh, you look at uh, what was going on in the OpenStack community. It's every six months. You look at what's going on uh, in a lot of the open source, especially like you know, Docker and that whole ecosystem. It's every two months. So uh, you know, we know that things are going to change constantly, just the speed of change and, and how fast uh, we have to move at that. So, and absolutely people want to consume it uh, more in kind of that operational model. But it's, uh, it, it, I think we don't agree maybe with the term bimodal, uh, but uh, I'm going to have you know, some things that I purchase in a capital expense model and others that I manage uh, in an OPEX model. So, we've t been talking <laughs> for years as well about the cartel. You know, the chessboard is owned by a few, you know, select a handful, I should say, you know, of large companies. And somebody makes a move and it ripples through the industry. I think we're seeing that with, with Dell EMC. But you know, basically IBM, you know, Oracle, HP splitting up, Dell EMC, Cisco. Let's talk about Cisco a little bit. You know, Brian, former former company. Yep. Does Chuck Robbins, you know, everybody, everybody in our little world is, oh, they got up, they have to buy a storage company, and maybe they do, because if you don't have an integrated stack, maybe you're screwed. Right. Um, but if you're Chuck Robbins, I'm guessing your head is not in storage right now. He's thinking in and out of everything and you know, much bigger picture, but, but at the same time, there's a data center business there. So where right. there's Cisco. Well, um, so he's, he's obviously brand new, but he's been at Cisco for, for 20 some years. Uh, cleaned house a lot, you know, brought in a whole new management staff that, that uh, you know, w whether he's doing it with John Chambers or not, we'll see. Um, you know, the, the thing for them, so networking has been the one place that you know, they still have a huge market share, 60 plus percent market share. Uh, I think we saw some data the other day, the white boxes are still in the you know, single digits. So that, that phenomenon that, that has hit storage in terms of sort of commoditizing hasn't hit networking nearly as hard. Um, but he's got to figure out, how do, I, how do I network those next billion, 10 billion devices? So that's a big deal. But the trick for that is, unlike the internet build out where you, know, you were building those roads, they got to they got to play a role higher in the stack, and and that's going to be what's interesting for Cisco because now you're going to get into am I interacting with the data companies? Am I interacting with the analytics companies? Um, and and Cisco acquires well, but that's a big jump in the stack from an acquisition perspective. We'll see how quickly they they give them the big checkbook to maybe mm -hmm. go do something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, I, I mean Brian mentioned earlier that Amazon's kind of rewritten the rules. In some spaces, we're seeing massive changes. Look at what's going on in the compute space. The ODMs made a big push. Dell moving with EMC, <coughs> HP splitting, IBM selling off the x86 to Lenovo. Uh, the compute space is changing a lot. Storage, I mean, Dave, you know, I, I worked at a big storage company for 10 years. If you saw more than you know, a couple of tenths of percent move in the market, everybody kind of freaked out. Today, you know, in 2015, there were big moves. I mean, not just the acquisition moves. In 2016, you're going to see a couple of points move in a few directions, product lines are moving, going through massive transitions, but as Brian says, networking hasn't really seen that change. White box, not only are they the, the white boxes in single digits, it's flat. It's, yeah. you know, the, the revenue has not been growing. I was talking to a Wall Street guy last week, um, and he kind of walked through, through the numbers, and he was like, you know, Stu, it's at 2% of the market. 
and it's been that way for the last two years. So while many of us thought that things like SDN uh, and you know, baking in networking functionality might really disrupt Cisco, uh, most people at this point think that Cisco has weathered this, this last wave. Now, as IoT comes to the market and some other big waves come, everybody always wants to go after Cisco. Uh, and as you know, public cloud, you, know, you look at what Oracle's doing, look at what Amazon's doing, look at what Microsoft's doing. Uh, there's edge cases where they can try to eat away at Cisco, but Cisco's got a pretty strong position. IBM's another interesting one, my, my tongue in cheek is, Dell buys EMC, IBM buys the weather company. You know, what the heck's going on? And a lot of IBM's competitors like to say, oh, IBM's getting out of hardware, they're giving up on hardware. You know, they're not. You know, it's still you know, Z, which is the original converged infrastructure, high margin business, and you know, power, the open power movement, kind of interesting. Storage is sort of going towards software defined. But the real shift in IBM is around analytics, around Watson. IBM announced the big IoT initiative today. They hired Harriet. Uh, Green uh, from uh, Thomas Cook as a new executive. Dion Newman's now the VP of marketing. Classic IBM, right? They opened up, I don't know, eight new facilities, IOT, expertise centers, a thousand developers, a bunch of new APIs. It's like <laughs> this engine. And so Watson seems to be this really interesting beast that nobody in the traditional enterprise you know, is able to replicate. And IBM's pouring you know, a lot of money, billions, into Watson. So I think it's you know, going to pay off. Interestingly, you saw, I think earlier this week, Facebook announced it's open sourcing, it's AI capability. You talk to the real alpha geeks and they say, look, Google and, and Facebook have the best AI. Watson's big, IBM-like, monolithic. You know, you, you've pointed at a problem like healthcare and it'll take some time and then solve that problem, but in terms of flexibility, agility, it's, it's We've seen this movie before, Brian. What, right. <laughs> well, what you, what's the, your the, take the, on all this? Well, the, the game, so with IBM, I think you're right. I think at, at some point they win. It's just a matter of how long is that, is that journey, right? How long can Wall Street wait? How long can, can Ginny you know, kind of have results that she has results? I, the, the thing about, the, you know, people get worried about a Facebook or a Google open sourcing something, you know, does it impact a Cisco on networking or does it impact IBM? That's a, that's a hiring play. That's essentially them saying, that is so important to my business. I need as many engineers around as I can get. I'm going to open source it. They don't have to sell it. They, just, they reap the benefits of it. It's a brilliant play by them. It's a brilliant play by the Googles of those guys. Um, it's not so impactful to the IT industry, but it, it becomes you know, kind of how do I feed this thing that, that drives what they do. So uh, The other big story, Stu, at 2015 that we haven't talked about much on theCUBE, every now and then, certainly Furrier talks about a lot, it's just the Microsoft, the relevance of Microsoft, the re-emergence of Microsoft as a relevant player. I don't know if you saw the headlines, right? <laughs> Bomber, you know, slapping down Satya at the end. I mean, who knows, it's, it's media, but it's also Bomber, so it could be true. Was that sour grapes? I mean, don't you think Satya's doing a pretty good job? I, I, I do, and first of all, you know, talk about re relevance in the marketplace, it was, you know, they were the punchline in the Silicon Valley jokes for many years, Dave. Uh, and Wikibon's research, you know, if you take SaaS, infrastructure as a service and platform as a service, Microsoft's number one. I mean, you know, th they might not be number one in SaaS standalone or infrastructure as a service standalone, um, but they're number one overall. Um, they, they have still, Dave, they own their applications. And, uh, you know, I th you kind of say, okay, how many customers are using Office 365? All of them. Well, how many of them just got kind of moved into buying Office 365 and haven't moved to the cloud? Well, many of them are moving there, but boy, it's, Microsoft saying it's okay to go to the cloud. We're going to be your good partner. Uh, you know, th they've got so many different businesses. I mean, you know, Xbox is still one of the hottest gifts, uh, you know, of the season here. So Microsoft is relevant. They're showing up a lot more places. Uh, the other one, I mean, we, we touched on Google briefly. You know, big move. You know, Diane Green. You know, running the cloud group there. Something I'm really excited to look at in 2016, especially all of us that uh, you know watch the ascendance of VMware as to you know what Google's going to do there. Now let's go to the other end of the spectrum, Oracle. So, we're all at Oracle Open World. Um, Donatelli's there in force, bringing some of uh, his, his old buddies back. You know, Barry Burke now working at Oracle. Obviously, Chuck Hollis is there. You know, hiring like crazy, going all in on, on the red stack. It seems to me that you know, Oracle's playbook is pretty clear. It's you know, our way or the highway. And we're going to run better, Oracle better on, on Oracle. And we're going to vertically integrate and that's what we're doing. And so they make no apologies about it. It's a clear strategy, it's well articulated, and the, to me the big thing about Oracle is they, they've always spent money on R&D. Um, Oracle's Achilles heel is that sort of cross-platform, you know, open, 
horizontal play. But you know, Stu, you were there. What, what's your take? on Yes. Yeah, so, so you know, we often uh, the term gets thrown around a lot, data gravity. But if you talk about stickiness of certain things in the environment, I've actually been surprised. Uh, you know, specific storage uh, vendor. Uh, it's kind of easy to you know change what storage I have. Uh, even virtualization. Customers going you know from VMware over to say Microsoft or you know just buying some solution and KVMs baked into it is easier to move. The application is the toughest thing to change out there and Oracle's got the biggest baddie of them all. So, you know, moving that application, Oracle's taking, done a lot of work to help pull it into the cloud. Uh, you, you talked about Microsoft's application, IBM of course owns applications. So, you know, Oracle's got a great place and they've got a strategy to help, you know, work on, you know, their customers, <laughs> uh, their install base and, you know, boy, they've got all those Java, uh, Java apps too. Well, I mean, you know, we always cringe because our customers, you know, complain about Oracle you know, licensing and, and pricing, but the thing about Oracle, like Microsoft when Bill Gates was running it, is when the founder is the chairman running the company and says, we are going in this direction, it has substance. You know, so many, we've, how many announcements do we see where just, you go, okay, and then you know, a year later, it's a new strategy, strategy du jour. So Oracle's strategy, I think, is very sound. Now, mo let's face it, most or much of Oracle's you know, cloud certainly from the infrastructure side is hosting, much of its SaaS apps are hosting, they're going to call that cloud, that's okay, that's the game everybody's playing. IBM does the same thing. Uh, and, and Oracle's got some work to do to get to sort of true cloud, and it's got you know, bits and pieces, right? It's got the SaaS piece, it's got the PaaS piece, it's got the infrastructure service, it's got the storage piece, the storage piece is in pieces. So it's got to bring those together. As I say, when you have a leader who owns the budget, you know, there's opportunities uh, exist there. I know you guys are, t are tight on time. Um, okay, let's, let's wrap, sort of looking ahead to 2016. What should we be looking for and you know, any final thoughts? Um, well, th the big thing for me for 2016 is, is looking at, you know, we're, we're talking about you know, sort of digital digitalization here. Uh, how fast do those new applications take off? I'm going to be looking at how big that market gets, who leads in that, is that, is that you know, Docker, is that Cloud Foundry, is that those types of things? Because um, that, that has a direct impact, as we saw all this all day today, on changing the business, of impacting, you know, differentiating the business. That's a big area I want to be looking at, 2016. Stu? Yeah, for me, so some of the architectural uh, environments out there, we've been looking, David Floyer especially, at you know, the all-flash arrays and some of the technologies underpinning it. Uh, some of those building block companies, if you look at you know, Micron's inside a whole lot of devices, uh, HPE just launched Synergy, and you know, there's Micron all embedded in there. Uh, uh, Western Digital and HGST just bought SanDisk, so that's going to you know, move them up from kind of the number three and four position up to you know, almost tied with Intel for the lead in that market. You know, we've been talking for years, Dave, as to how Flash has been growing, and, and that wave has just you know, grown so much momentum uh, that, you know, well, is the next generation going to come soon? Well, Flash has still got a lot of runway to, to take environments, and those are impacting you know, the storage architectures, the server SAN architectures, uh, and, and the cloud environments that, that go on. So, so, you know, massive change. So for me, it's, you know, you know deep throat, follow the money. My, my thing is for, for 2016 is follow the value. And I think it's, for organizations out there, it's not, you don't have to invent. It's all about really how you apply technologies within that digital fabric to create a business capability. That's where you're going to get differentiation. I think as, you know, as industry watchers, we always look for the, who's the next Intel, the next Microsoft, the next Cisco, the next EMC. It's really going to come from how you apply technology. So that's what, I'm going to look for in 2016 who's really doing that. Uh, well guys, thanks very much for holding down the fort when I was on my call today. It was great, <laughs> great to, to see you guys in Boston. Looking forward to our dinner tonight. And thanks everybody for watching. We're here at BMC Day, you know, covering all the angles. This is theCUBE. Check out all the action on wikibon.com. That's where all the research lives. SiliconAngle.tv is where all the CUBE uh, videos are. And of course, SiliconAngle.com for all the news, crowdchat.net. This is theCUBE. Dave Vellante, Stu Miniman, Brian Gracely, we'll see you next time. <laughs>